HKM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk, to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we will show you some Veterans Day events that occurred in Hopkinton. The Hillers golf team reflects on a terrific 2015 season, and Courtney has our HCAM insider. But first, the Boston Marathon-based 26.2 Foundation gave an update at the Board of Selectmen meeting and had some ideas that could be very beneficial for the community. The desire to inspire program was started by uh, Deb Pinto. Uh, I just found out today, by the way, Deb Pinto was a phys ed instructor at the, at the middle school. She has just been named uh, the outstanding physical education uh, educator in the Northeast and will go on to a national competition uh, with one of the uh, association, largest associations for physical education in the country. But the program is pretty simple. We use the marathon as a base, and these teachers have taken uh, the marathon theme and run it through math science um, uh, in their English classes uh, across the board. They do, they do several of events. Uh, there is a 2.62 uh, uh, event that they run. But here's the trick now. The trick is that they've been able to take this marathon theme and drive it through other uh, areas in the classroom. And they, they did a little poster campaign. You can see this one on the right. I will shovel 26.2 uh, pounds of snow. So they challenged the kids to do something because not everybody's going to run a marathon. Uh, this is not just, uh, come, how can it doesn't have a marathon? It has a marathon footprint, but it has a running footprint. There are 90 kids in the middle school that are running cross country. 90 in the middle school. There are another 90 that are running at the high school level. The middle school had a little a cross country meet the other day, and they had schools from, uh, two schools from, uh, from Natick, for example. Those two schools didn't come close to having 90 kids. So that's not us that are doing that. This is inbred now, and it's, uh, it's really developing. Uh, and you'll see uh, in, a, in a minute some of the kind of priorities that we're talking about. The third time, this does not exist anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world. Uh, that mosaic, and there are two now, that, that comes out of one guy, John Cop <laughs> Copley, working with high school kids to develop, again, an iconic piece, an iconic piece of art. And I think one of the things that we don't do enough of that I'm hoping you will, as a, as a board, will challenge us to do more of, and that is to take that story and socialize it. Uh, we, we've got a powerful story to tell, again, reaching beyond the marathon into the classroom. And, uh, and, and the students that helped uh, to create that mosaic, and they did it, and they stood at the starting line in the cold weather, and they caught that shot of the women's race uh, and then with uh, some leadership from a guy like Copley, we're, we're able to develop that. A bit later in the 26.2 Foundation presentation, Mr. Kilduff showed the selectmen the request, which includes a brand new cross-country course. Sure. Two things I want to say first. A, I, I, I like when you come in very much because of all the private groups we work with in this private public kind of way, you're by far the best at coming in, telling us what's going on, telling us what you've done, telling us what you need from us. Not, not everybody does that, and sometimes they hold it against us, but I mean, it's, it's great that you actually do with this and come in and, and sort of um, and have an ask. I, I, we like that. We like it when people come in and we can do things. So that's the general comment. The specific comment is this cross-country course, is this going to be built in, entirely on it, it, have you contemplated yet where you're going to put it specifically? By which I mean, will it be on school land or some town land or, I assume not private land? Have, do you have any sort of a rough? Yeah, uh, there is a, there's one loop that uh, might be on proper, private land that we'd have to get uh, 
a variance to use. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure that's the right word, but mostly on, on town owned, school owned, school owned uh, property. Okay. And, and by I, the way, yeah. pri private, private. We're not, we're not going to look for. Uh, Town funding for this. Even better. So, um, so right. So, I think we all love the center trail. That's been a phenomenal addition yes. to the town. I mean, and it's such, it's such a nice setup, and and the artwork there was terrific. So, I mean, anything like that, I think, would be wonderful. So, what I would say is, I would suggest you talk to the school committee and see if they'd be on board with this in some fashion. If they are then I think we would quickly move to put a, put a group in place to actually lay this out on a map. You'd have our support on the town land, for sure. Um, let's get the schools, let's just get going. I mean, I think, I think everyone, you heard, I mean, everyone thinks it'd be a wonderful idea. We'd love to do it. Anything that enhances the trail network, the community would like. So let's just get it done. Um, so may, just tell us if, if there's a pathway with the schools, come back, we'll get a charter, we'll get this moving. Uh, Mr. Mosier, just, just a quick question, Tim. Would would that follow up? Would that include any other properties or or um, conceptual locations? I guess for the, for this project. Uh, the, the, one of the, the one of the pieces of property that we've looked at very seriously is land adjacent to the the Legacy Farm uh, piece, uh, the Spangler property, as we refer to it. I happen to think there are other possibilities, but that's on the race course. And again, there's no other, there's no better place in town. But there are other locations that are possible. Okay, thank and you. I think we have to look at the economic reality of this. Amen. Okay, thanks. <coughs> okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Do we have any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Present. Not voting. That's thank unanimous. You. Thank you very thanks much. for coming in, Tim. I really like it. Tim. Thank you. This week, Hopkinton celebrated Veterans Day. Mike Whalen of the American Legion Post 202 led the annual ceremony at the Hopkinton Senior Center. Here is a look at some of the highlights. Good. Today is the day we honor the noble and the brave, the men and women who dedicated their lives and the sacrifices that they have made. When America had an urgent need, they were the first to raise their hand. Without thinking twice about it, they were proud to take a stand. Some came back from war with battle scars, others in flag-draped coffins. Even though their flesh may have left, their spirits will never be forgotten. They unselfishly and knowingly put their lives on the line. So when you see a veteran, thank them, because without them, freedom would have died. Let's go. Ryan Brennan is here to recite our standby uh, Veterans Day poem uh, in Flanders Field. In Flanders Fields by John McCray, May 1915. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row. Mark our place, and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, and short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Good. Right. Hello, my name is Sophie Schneider, and I'm a sophomore at Hoppington High School. And I would like to thank Adjutant Whalen for this opportunity to speak before you all today. When you Google Veterans Day, the date November 11th is the first result. This is a day where people can take the time to remember those who have served in the protection of our rights and freedoms for this great country. But for so many, the ideals of Veterans Day do not conform to one single day. For so many, Veterans Day is every day. A day does not pass when they forget the haunting memories of war or the sacrifice of their years. These are the kind of memories that cannot be forgotten. Yet once a year, on November 11th, Americans attempt to put themselves in veteran's shoes and to empathize. We want so desperately to remove any painful memories, but unfortunately, the past cannot be changed. The pain you have suffered and the sacrifices you have made have not gone unnoticed. And for that, I would like to thank you for your service. Uh, next, carrying on a tradition that she started all by herself, to recognize uh, Hopkinton veterans from uh, World War II, Mary Harrington. During World War II, Hopkinton lost 12 of its brave men.
And what I've been trying to do is to do a biography on each of those people who passed away so that we can bring their sacrifices forward uh, as we celebrate Veterans Day today. The one I've chosen for today is Merton Chenard. Merton was born in 1923 at, in the family home at the corner of Cedar and B Street to Louis and Ruth Chenard. He was a graduate of Hopkins High School and he was a hard worker as a young man, raising pigs and having a very large garden. This earned him a scholarship from the 4-H to attend the Stockbridge School in Amherst to study agriculture as he came from a family of 15, and at that time they were the largest family in Hopkinton, his efforts helped to support and feed his family. He joined the Army Air Force and was a 21-year-old second lieutenant navigator in a B-24 Liberator bomber named Part of Luck when he was shot down over Germany on September 28, 1944. He was part of the 567th Bomb Squadron and the 389th Bomb Group. Everyone on board bailed out, and later it was learned that Merton might have drowned in the Rhine River. He initially was reported as missing in action. However, after a year, the Army located the body. His father declined the offer to send the body home, stating that it didn't make sense that we'd never know if it was really him. Merton is buried in the American War Cemetery in Margraten, Netherlands. He was posthumously awarded the Air Medal with two oak leaf clusters and the Purple Heart. Today our battles are not just with enemies of our nation, but the enemies of all the good people of this earth. This country's military is combating evil in every corner of the planet. Yes, evil, or the devil, or whatever name you give to it, must exist. It is really the only explanation for the atrocities and crimes against humanity that we can all view in this modern era because of technology. <coughs> History has shown us that isolationism and inaction to these inhuman offenses is a mistake. The leaders of our country should realize that with all our resources, we have a moral obligation take up the mantle and defend all the innocent and just people of this earth from the misguided zealots. I believe that this country's young men and women are certainly ready to defend our way of life and freedoms that we enjoy as the generations that came before them did. Remember, this nation will remain the land of the free as long as it is the home of the brave. You can see the full annual Veterans Day ceremony airing on HCAM and on our website, hcam.tv. Speaking of Veterans Day ceremonies, Hopkins Elementary School also hosted their annual Veterans Day ceremony. State Representative Carolyn Dykema was a guest speaker. Yes, freedom is a thing, but you can't hold it in your hand or draw a picture of it. However, you sure know if you don't have it. Living here in Hopkinton is easy to take it for granted. So about a hundred years ago, someone decided we should set aside one day and thank those who defend and protect our way of life, Veterans Day. Make no mistake, Veterans Day is not an occasion to glorify or celebrate war, but to show respect to those who have made sacrifices for our freedoms. You are the next generation, and I'm counting on you to keep Veterans Day alive and well in the future.
to have the opportunity to be here with you today, the day before Veterans Day, to talk a little bit about Veterans Day and what it means to all of us. And tomorrow, we're going to have a whole day to make sure to say thank you to a veteran. Now, how many here know a veteran? Wow. So it is going to be really easy for you tomorrow to make sure to say thank you to that veteran, right? Yeah. My dad is a veteran. He's, in, he's a veteran of the U.S. Air Force, and I think if you asked him why he served in the military and why he is a veteran, I think he would tell you that it's because he loves his country and because he loves his kids and he loves the fact that we live in a democracy where we all have freedom. There are people who, who think it's so important to have freedom that they're willing to serve in the military and say, if somebody tries to take that freedom away from my family, from the community of Hopkinton, for all the young people in the world, I am going to make sure that never happens. And I am willing to even give my life to be able to do that. That's how important freedom is to me, and that's how important your freedom is to every veteran who's agreed to serve in the U.S. military. So for us to make sure to say thank you to our veterans, they don't ask for a whole lot, actually. And, and if you talk to a veteran, sometimes they're, they're kind of humble. All the time they're kind of humble, actually. And so we have to make sure that we recognize the sacrifices that they make and that their families make when they go to serve for us, wherever it may be, here in the United States, or sometimes they have to go to go overseas. We have a lot of veter or, um, U.S. military serving overseas right now, protecting our freedoms. So I want to make sure that we remember tomorrow to say thank you to that veteran. And could I ask all the veterans here today to have, to raise their hands so that we know who they are? Okay. Looks so like we've got three 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 hands going up today. Can we take a minute? We're going to practice saying thank you. Can we say thank you to our veterans here today? Thank you. Thank you. Coming up next on HCAM News, 11 seniors who just completed their final season on the Hopkinton High School golf team reflect on Coach Bliss as well as their run of three straight TVL championships. And Courtney has our HCAM insider. A lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. We are the girls from Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Trojan for the awesome tour of the H Camp Studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend one, to learn a Girl Scout Troop. And two, visiting H Camp to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Colello Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout Troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. Welcome back to HCAM News. The 11 seniors who were members of the Hopkinton High School golf team this season got to be a part of the Hillers third straight TVL championship and a 17 and one season. The seniors recently got together and interviewed each other about the 2015 season for an HCAM news segment that was later played at their end of the season banquet. Considerate, <laughs> friendly, determined, dedicated, <laughs> supportive, <laughs> devoted, devoted. <laughs> knowledgeable, helpful, <laughs> caring. One way to describe Coach would have to be wise. Coach is one of the smartest people I know when it comes to the game of golf, and I take everything he says into deep consideration, and it always helps. Definitely affectionate, uh, comes up to me all the time, puts his hand on my shoulder, tells me he loves me, and I appreciate that a lot. Love you too, coach. Jake, what is your favorite memory of the 2015 golf season? 
I'd have to say my favorite memory was when we won the uh, TVL in our last match to go 17-1. and one. It's a great, great moment. <laughs> it really was. What advice would you give to the younger kids on the team? I'd just say keep working hard in the offseason and strive to get better. Matt, what's your favorite memory of the 2015 golf season? My favorite memory of the 2015 golf season would have to be when two freshmen decided to have a big old fight at the last bagger. It was really something. Quite the fight. One-sided, if I must say. What advice would you give the younger kids on the team? Um, I would have to say, do not call Coach the dog. He does not appreciate that. That's the truest thing I've ever heard. Dario, what was your favorite memory of the golf season? Uh, my favorite memory was just probably all the delicious food the parents were so kind to bring. It was great, and I'm happy they provided it. And what advice would you, would you give to the younger kids on the golf team? Uh, the advice I would give is don't worry about what anyone else is shooting. Just focus on your individual score. Jake, hey man, what was your favorite memory of the 2015 golf season? I would have to say it was beating Medfield to win our TVL championship. It's a great memory. I might share that one. You. Hey, man. <laughs> Do you have any advice for the for the underclassmen? <laughs> um, yeah, I'd say just have fun and uh, really stay in the moment. It goes by pretty fast. I'll tell you what, that's the truest thing I've ever heard. Second truest aside from Maddie's thing. Matt, what was your favorite memory on the golf team? Uh... <laughs> My favorite memory would probably be winning the TVLs. Um, it was a great feeling, uh, three years in a row, so it was really fun. And what advice would you give the younger kids on the team? Um, if they want to get really good at golf, they should be like Jeff and Jimmy Herbal and play a lot of golf. What was your favorite memory on the 2015 season, man? I'd have to say it was the, uh, the freshman smackdown that occurred the last bagger at my house. You know, it was a bit of a one-sided fight, but it was real, really entertaining. DePaul with quite the takedown there, man. Oh, yeah. What advice would you give the younger kids on the team? Um, I'd say ask for help when you need it, because um, coach is always there. Even if you need like a little help you know, with your putting, you can go take a look at it pretty quickly. Coach is quite the guy. He's a helper. Thank you. All right, Drew, what is your favorite memory of the 2015 golf season? Uh, I would say my favorite memory of the 2015 golf season was uh, when Jeff got his hole-in-one at Bellingham. It was on, I believe, the third hole at Maplegate. It was, uh, it was pretty cool. It's crazy stuff. Um, what advice would you give to the younger kids on the team? Uh, just listen to the coaches. The coaches know what they're doing. They're there for a reason. So just ask them any questions you, uh, you have, and that's all you got. You heard it here first. At HCAM. Drew Simi. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jeff. What was your favorite memory of the 2015 golf season? My favorite memory of the season was definitely Drew's reaction to when I got my hole-in-one against Medway. That was really something. Crazy. What advice would you give to the younger kids on the team? I would say, I would say just stay focused, uh, don't do anything stupid, and the next shot is the most important shot. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, what is your favorite memory of the 2015 golf season? My favorite man was beating DS at South Montreux. That was my best round of the year, and I'll remember that for a long time. Nice. Uh, what advice would you give to the younger kids on the team? I would, I would give the advice that just because you're not playing in a JV match or varsity match doesn't mean you're not going to play in the next one. Um, you just got to play good in the next practice round, and you should get out there sooner or later. My favorite memory of the season was probably at the Spagger, the final Spagger, and uh, two of the freshmen got into a bit of a fight. This year, that was fun. Uh, advice for the younger hillers are don't take the season for granted. The season's short and you're gonna miss it as soon as it's over. So take everything you do, like cherish it while it happens because it's over quick compared to the other fall sports. What is your favorite memory of the 2015 season? Gotta be winning the TVL title again for the third year in a row. Um, great, great job boys, good season. Uh, what advice do you have for the younger hillers on the team? I would have to say uh, just listen to everything Coach Bliss has to say to you. He is one of the smartest mans I've ever met about the game of golf. He definitely knows what he's doing and whatever he tells you, just soak it in and remember it for the rest of your life. Congratulations to the Hillers golf team seniors for a terrific high school career and for bringing home a lot of championship trophies. 
We will have highlights of the golf team banquet airing on HCAM News soon and available on our website, hcam.tv. There is a whole lot of programming coming up on the HCAM channels. To get you caught up with everything you need to know, here is Courtney with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, November 13th at 8 p.m., Muriel Kramer joins the Hopkinton Coffee Break hosts. On Saturday, November 14th at 1.30 p.m., the Hillers take on Norwood in this football game. On Monday, November 16th at 7 p.m., Haley Hewitt performs her harp on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Tuesday, November 17th at 6.45 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, November 18th at 11 a.m., veterans are thanked and honored for their service on a new HCAM News Focus. At 12.30 p.m., learn about alternative spine treatments on the Hopkinton Drug Lecture Series. On Thursday, November 19th at 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Sunday, November 22nd at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from November 16th will air. And on HCAM Ed, Hopkins students also honor our veterans and learn about Veterans Day in the Hopkins Elementary School Veterans Day ceremony. We have plenty of programming coming up on our HCAM channels. If you want to know when, visit hcam.tv slash newsupdates to sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. You can also sign up for our daily news updates to learn about the latest Hopkins and happenings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook pages. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, we thank you for watching.